What's going on? It's J.A. here and you're watching Unsolved Sneaker Mysteries. Was there ever a sneaker which you knew was yours, but then come release date, you couldn't cop and you just couldn't wrap your mind around why, but you knew something was fishy. Well, today we're going to be taking a look at three mysteries from around the world of sneakers and using my expertise and my experience, we're going to try to draw some type of conclusion for these stories right here. So to kick things off, we're going to start with Salehi Bembry, a huge success here in the world of sneakers after earning his industrial design degree from Syracuse. He got his start with a position in the industry over at Payless, which is not anything to write home about, but that position eventually led to another position, which eventually led to a job at Easy. He also made a lot of noise here in the world of sneakers with his various New Balance collaborations, but I would say it's the Polex Crocs design which really stamped him here in sneakers. And it was so successful that Crocs even gave him the position of creative director for the Polex line. So this year, we saw him debut the Crocs Juniper sneaker, a sneaker which is said to be inspired by the outdoors as well as made for the outdoors. A very unconventional look, but for me, it was that guava colorway which really made me fall in love. Plus, being as the fact it was a brand new model, I knew this was a pair that I just had to get my hands on. So I was locked and loaded for the release, ready to go according to Salehi. These do run true to size being is that I'm a true to size 10 and a half I opted to go for the size 11 but once these joints went live it looked like the size 11 loaded up sold out so in that case I'm guessing it must have been the resellers the botters must have been onto these like that because it felt like these were an instant sellout so what do you know what's the next thing you could do for a sneaker that sells out you got to hit the secondary market. So I went over to StockX, noticed that these are selling for a decent amount via the secondary market. Went over to my size 11 and noticed that there was nothing available. So I'm thinking, hey, everybody's thinking the same thing like me. This is a hot release. So hot that resellers can't even keep these in stock. But then I went over to the sales history, which StockX does a great job of keeping a tab on all of the sales. And I noticed for size 11, that there was never a single sale ever. And overall, all of the sales for all of the sizes, it looks like there wasn't many sales overall total. So it feels like as far as this sneaker release goes, I thought these joints were loaded up instantly. I didn't know if the botters ate all these up or what, but apparently the only conclusion that I can reach for this release is that they must have made like a thousand pairs of these or something, which I understand, you know, sneakerheads, we want something limited like that, but if they're making shoes this limited, I really can't stand behind it. And next up, we're gonna enter Marcus Jordan, heir to the throne, MJ's very own flesh and blood. Now, there's this big story a couple of years ago, which made waves through the sneaker industry saying that Marcus Jordan backdoored uh, the majority of his highly anticipated trophy room collaboration. So according to the story, Marcus, he had a real bad night in Vegas, allegedly blowing like over millions of dollars at a single casino. And what he did in order to recuperate the funds, as we mentioned, backdoored the pairs early in advance to resellers who were offering cash up front. So once the release date actually went down, these were so limited, it seemed like there was no pairs left over that nobody was able actually to cop. And to make matters even worse, Marcus allegedly said that all of the pairs were stolen and in return did file an insurance claim of which he was paid out millions on top of all of the money he was already making from the resale and everything like that. So with this year, Marcus, he did have another high profile trophy room collaboration in the trophy room Jordan 1 Lowe's, which apparently I was thinking with everything that happened, you know, maybe sneakerheads will boycott, but then again, nobody cares when it comes to the resale of these prices like that. So people lined up for the local raffle. Um, it was all cool. People were able to grab pairs from trophy room Orlando. They were showing off the pairs on social media, flexing, everything was great. The raffle seemed to go fair right well allegedly what people are saying now is that you know Marcus did everything to make it look good via social media but then after the release went ahead and shipped out his pairs to all of the bulk buyers now what I'm thinking is that Marcus he had to have been on his best behavior after all of the allegations and there's no way that he was back doing these pairs like that but then again when I think about things when it comes to Nike I feel like they would turn a blind eye to the insurance claims and all that just in order to make it appear that their releases are more limited so even if Marcus is back doing pairs Nike really could care less because it just gives the illusion that these pairs are more desirable the resale prices are driving up and then in return it trickles down for 
from more people buying more of Nike's products. And finally, we have Adidas and Yeezy, where we just saw them drop this huge Yeezy sale where it felt like they released like over 100 different styles via the Adidas Confirmed app, adidas.com. We're also even seeing Yeezys hitting the Adidas outlet for the first time, discounted at 50% off. So with all of that being said, I was thinking this would be the final and last Yeezy sale, but apparently there's been this big headline which comes from Adidas quarterly financial report which went down back last April where it said that Adidas had like roughly hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Yeezys still to drop. So many people believe that we're going to continue to see Yeezys release, you know, throughout the duration of the year. But in my opinion, I don't really think things are going to go down just like that. So people are thinking that we're going to see like new pairs like these 350 V2 MX Frost, these 700 V1 Sulfurs. But unfortunately, I do have to break it to you that these pairs do not actually exist see this actually was a big rumor that was started like years back I want to say like maybe two three years ago these actually came from Yeezy Mafia so the whole thing of course everybody knows Yeezy Mafia you know they started off with all of the Yeezy leaks being one of the first insiders to give us a inside look at upcoming Yeezy releases but then once I started to make waves I started to get a lot more inside information people from Adidas everything like that so Yeezy Mafia what they were trying to do at that time was to try to one up me and my team so they were just pretty much throwing out fake leaks like that hoping shit stuck but unfortunately y'all these pairs are not real and will never be dropping so i feel like maybe they could have been samples at some time but these pairs will never officially released so my theory is is that we, if we do still see adidas dropping more yeezys what they'll probably do is pull all of the pairs that are still available via the confirmed app because if you guys jump on adidas confirmed you will still notice there is a decent amount of sizes still left for certain styles so what i feel like they will do is pull all of this stock and then try to market like one final Adidas Yeezy drop later this year. Maybe they'll throw in like some leftover pairs of like Wave Runners, stuff that people are checking for, but in extremely limited quantities in order to hype up the drop and be able to uh, sell off all of this unsold pairs. So if you guys got your hopes high that we're gonna see unreleased pairs from Adidas dropping more Yeezys throughout the duration of the year, I would just keep my expectations in line. I feel like the only thing we could potentially see is just like restocks of some of these leftover pairs and Adidas try to like market them in a big way as like the final Yeezy sale to try to drive up the demand and everything like that. But for me, this whole Adidas Yeezy thing is honestly dead. I think it's time that we kind of move on from things here. And I feel like if Adidas was to do the right thing, they've already made their money at cost. So what I feel like they should do with all of the leftover pairs is just go ahead and discount them uh, on their website or just go ahead and send everything to the outlet. So that's how I feel like we'll go down with this Yeezy uh, Adidas thing and everything like that. I really feel like it's honestly the end y'all so we got three mysteries here in the world of sneakers i tried to give you guys my best conclusion to all of these stories but unfortunately these are stories that we may never find the answers to so drop your feedback down below let me know what you guys think about these three mysteries here from the world of sneakers so we're gonna wrap things up if you guys enjoyed these unsolved sneaker mystery stories be sure to drop a like here on this video i'm ja stay safe stay blessed and i'll catch y'all tomorrow i'm out love